Corey. And we're back, and we're going to talk about three pretty interesting topics today. Yeah. So, with the housing crisis that's happening now, we all know it's existing. What are the potential solutions that are out there? Right. So, um, we've got three different things that we're going to talk about today. Um, one just came into effect a couple weeks ago, and that was the ban on foreign buyers for yes. two years. Uh, two, we'll talk about the... Um, uh, Sorry, I've got all the points up in front of me today. <laughs> um, the More Homes Built Faster Act, and yes. that was formerly Bill C-23. And then the third thing we like to talk about is the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights, and that's a proposal by the Liberal government. So it, it's interesting, the different perspectives that we're seeing from some of these. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought we'd maybe talk about them and kind of deep dive into them. Yeah, we would love your opinion too. Like, I mean, feel free to message us or put some comments um, so that we know kind of how you're feeling as well. I mean, there's probably surveys out there and things like that yeah for the public to you know what I mean get their feedback on these type of things but well actually something just came across uh, I think it was, I was looking on Facebook and it might have been CTV or Windsor 8 but they posted a survey um, I just seen it yesterday regarding okay. the vacant um, the proposed vacant house tax so uh, they just wanted public opinion like how how do they want to do it do they want to just you have to register for it, and if you don't, you get fined, um, or it's uh, by complaint basis, um, or uh, I forget what the third one was. But it's interesting because Toronto has already adopted that, where basically you have to register and say that you don't have a vacant house or else you're going to get the tax on it. Oh, okay. So it's not like an opt-out, it's an opt-in. So opt you have to prove that people are living in the house that you have. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So stuff like that, I... I'm and what four. was the, did you read the comments at all or? Uh, no, I think it, it might have been CBC where they had the comments turned off, so you oh, can't okay. actually comment on it. But right. um, uh, it, it's something that I, I'm curious about. Mm -hmm. um, my personal opinion on it, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. Um, we've got, when we have a housing crisis, we can't have people just, just speculating that the property is going to go up and right. just have it sit there. Yeah, they're buying, they're buying it more of like a, okay, instead of buying a bunch of stocks, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'll just buy a house. And it should go up 20% by, you know, the next six months to a year. But Mind you, that's not happening right now. So a lot of the, a lot of those people who purchase thinking it's going to continue, now they're kind of stuck. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. We talked about this on, a, on another podcast about how some are potentially even selling what they have now to right. get the vacant properties to right. charge whatever rents they want at that point. Mm -hmm. So stuff like this i think are, is great some of these other proposals we've talked about them and we're kind of like yeah it might it might not so on the foreign buyer ban at first it was kind of like okay and we've heard about this we've all probably heard whimmers about like especially in bc there's a lot of foreign influence yes. um again treating our housing market like it is a stock market or right. it's like a casino right um which at the end of the day the houses are to be lived in Yes, if you want to make a little bit of money off it, that's fine. Yeah, but at the right. end of the day, and rent it out or you know investment properties, right? Yeah, but but as a country right now, where we're shy, one point five million homes, we have to have some sort of working together mentality to, yes. to at least battle this. You know, once mm -hmm. we get this under control, then then yeah, you want to go back to that? Fine, we can get back to that. But but in times of crisis, we need to stand up and stand together. Right, and yeah, I mean the the foreign uh, the foreign ban. I mean, do the four and people that are from outside of our country really give a shit about what's going on in our country? Yeah. It, they, don't, they could care less. Like, you know what I mean? So controlling them a little bit, you know, controlling what they're able to purchase here, I think is smart because otherwise it's out of control already for the foreign buyers for sure. Mm -hmm. But... Um, yeah, talk a little bit more about it and kind of what it entails. Well, and that's where, will it make a huge difference? Yes, I think it is, it's a step in the right direction, but um, we've got it here. Less than 4% of residential property owners right now are non-residents. So, yeah, it's a little bit, but okay. every little bit adds up, right? Mm -hmm. So, if we keep doing chipping away, eventually we'll have a bigger solution. But some of the exception exemptions sorry, that I yep. thought kind of caught my eye were... Um, so. If one, if you're an international student who meets certain criteria and you've spent the bulk of the previous five years in Canada, uh, then you are able to purchase a home up okay. to five hundred thousand. Right, but they have to be in Canada with for about five years. Um, yeah, a brand new foreign uh, student. No, can't no, they just wouldn't go be ahead exempt. And buy a house, right? No. Um, so workers uh, who have filed and or who have worked and filed tax returns in Canada for at least three out of the four years prior to purchasing a property, mm -hmm. they're exempt. 
Uh, diplomats are exempt, um, foreign nationals with temporary resident status, um, including people fleeing from conflict and refugees. Obviously, 100% that should be an exemption. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this one I'm kind of confused about. And it was a building containing uh, more than three dwelling units and recreational properties. So cottages, cabins, and vacation homes. So they can come in and buy a vacation home. Or a multi Unit. unit yeah but so three dwelling units so does that mean a triplex uh, like um, a triplex or does it mean the basement's finished to li you know house someone and there's an ADU in the backyard so like what exactly does that mean that's what's gonna open this up to so much interpretation mm -hmm. and you're gonna find a, a, when we have rules like this they need to be clear-cut yeah because now I, I can only imagine the, the firestorm is going to happen with this right. and people saying, well, no, this it falls under this. It's, it's, There's it's a kitchen in the basement and I just plopped a, an ADU in the backyard. Yeah. Now I'm going to buy this property. Yeah. So if that's a loophole in the system, people are going to exploit that loophole. As soon right. as it's found, it's going to happen. Right. So that one I think needs to be revisited and needs to be talked about more. Um, and um, the fines, a $10,000 fine and they might be forced to sell. I'm mixed on that. I, I think it should be a lot higher, to be honest with you. Maybe forced to sell, so they may or may not. So if they buy a house, they really, really want the house, they don't mind paying an extra ten grand. Yep. They can go ahead and buy it and potentially might have to sell it. But if they don't really if they don't push it, okay fine, they paid an extra ten grand and Yep, another potential loophole, right? That's so, I don't think a big enough fine, to be honest. No, I don't I, I don't think it's enough. The the maybe forced to sell might discourage some of this bad behavior, but but I don't, the 10,000 is not, that's... It's not going to do it. Yeah, it's okay. a drop in the bucket, especially with the way housing prices are right now. Yep. So... Okay. So, that's, so yeah, I mean, there are some questions there. Yeah, that definitely... We'll see how it answer. goes. That's it's just started now. So we're going to see in the next probably... Yeah, we year probably won't so. know how it worked until five years down the road. We'll look back and say, you know what, that was a good idea. Or, you know what, that was a terrible idea. Right. It didn't work. It's the yep. only downside with that. Yep. So... Moving on to the next thing that uh, that just came into play was the the More Homes Build Faster Act, right. uh, formerly Bill C twenty three. Um, so this is one of the biggest proposals, and this is what they call addressing the missing middle. So this is where you're um, permitted to per up to three residential units are permitted as a right on most land zoned for homes in residential areas, with without needing a municipal bylaw amendment. This includes basement dwelling units and ADUs. Right. So what this is doing is basically opening up. I, I have a house right now. Um, I've got a garage. Um, I've got the basement. I might be able to convert the garage and charge rent on that. I can't do it with the basement. This is opening that up that as long as I meet the municipal bylaws, the codes for it, I can actually rent out my basement now too as well. This is going to create more residential units. Mm-hmm great in one aspect but it might also create more landlords and if we don't get the rent crisis under control right we're just compounding the issue mm -hmm. so i'm i'm iffy on that one i mean if let's say you as a homeowner wanted to rent out your basement let's say you could fix up your basement there's a great entrance you could do that and the garage it's it's going to help with the rising housing costs the increasing interest rates so it will help homeowners in a sense like you yeah. know I have to sell and rent um, or is there ways that I can have additional income on this house and continue to live here yeah I think it'll help in that way I think it will too but I think we're shifting too much of the focus back on to individuals um, and and I've, we've talked about this before non-market housing like things what they're doing like I said look into like Vienna Austria right um, a country that the rest of the world is starting to model them after. I mean, you've got 60 plus percent of all housing, which is owned by by the government, by the people. And, and it's not uh, like affordable housing isn't a stigma. It's not something right. to be like, oh, well, like it's not what down on. It. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we also need to change the way we think. Um, uh, that might be a... It's a big step. <laughs> it is. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, it's stigmas. It's all it is, really. Like if, right. if we... A lot of people see here affordable housing. They think crime. They think um, they, it's it's dangerous. It's not safe, which mm -hmm. isn't really the case. And right. there's no. I was reading a report the other day about um, uh, resale value on a home in a low income neighborhood or around social housing. Mm -hmm. There's no proven study that it affects the value of the price. 
either. So it, it's it's a lot of nonsense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the biggest part of that proposal. Um, a lot of the other stuff in there is streamlining the bureaucratic process, um, zoning bylaws, that sort of thing, to try and mm -hmm. get more shovels in the ground. Yep. One thing that I find and a lot of um, opponents to this strategy or to this act is that it um, promotes urban sprawl. That's something we need to stop. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to start building more units in, in more, um, like cl close to public services, close to hospitals, close to public transit. We need to start building higher. We need to stop spreading out so much. Um, we need to start uh, urban densification is what we need to start doing. Mm -hmm. This kind of goes against that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest proponents to that. Um, they also want to address the vacant homes issue, which is something that we just talked about. They are looking at that. Um, and then strengthening the non-resident speculation tax. So another thing that's been put forward that we can hopefully use to address the housing mm -hmm. crisis. Yeah, for sure. But we'll see. Let us know your thoughts on that. And then the third one. I don't know if you wanted to... Well, this is... Uh... <laughs> This is always something that we get a little riled up about. Yes. Um, and so the Liberal government has come up with a the uh, home, proposed, right? Yep. Home Buyers Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. which includes um, they they are against uh, blind bidding, which we've already talked about this before. We are yep. against blind bidding for a number of reasons, but I'm I'm happy to see this here. But whether or not it happens or not. That's another uh, story. So it prevents bidders. So blind bidding versus transparent bidding, open bidding. Um, if you're not kind of aware of those terms, blind bidding is currently what we are using now. So yes. if there's 10 offers, I'm making an offer, I'm number eight. I have no clue um, what any of the other offers are offering, yep. right? So I don't know if I'm 40,000 above. I don't know if I'm close to the other offer. So this can create a lot of unethical behavior. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and we've talked about this before, so we're not gonna go over it again, but we are for, blind, we are for open bidding. So open bidding would be transparency. So there's 10 offers. I would know um, that the highest offer is 350. I can afford 351. So I'm gonna try 351 or 355. Yeah. So it's, I think it's fair for a lot a lot of reasons yeah and so the liberal government is proposing um and then when we look at that there's there's so many different viewpoints on it too like there's the the smarter propensity launched their report um showing that would actually increase prices we've got to take reports like that with a grain of salt though when you have a report that is funded by the organization that it is that for is <laughs> <laughs> so um that report was funded by crea which i'm not saying is, is necessarily a bad thing but that is a little bit of a conflict of interest there right you need to take that with a grain of salt um so the crea's crea's kind of um they're for blind bidding in a lot of yeah, and that's another thing that, that's a little bit confusing um, when we launch a report that talks about that, but at the same time, they're investing in a company that is that promotes open bidding, and that's Open Negotiations, an Australian-based company. So it's 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 a little confusing. I, I'd like to know where their perspective is with it. If, mm -hmm. it. if it is, if they believe it is going to increase prices, then why are we investing in a platform that is going to... Help with open bidding. Yes, so it's... Right. It's a little bit of hypocrisy, mm -hmm. um, I, but um, I, I, I don't know. There, there might be some rhyme or reason behind it. I just, I'd like to be, I'd right. like to know what it is. Right. <laughs> well, currently it's supposed to be um, in the process. Right now there's supposed to be some beta testing with the open bidding structure. Yep. It's not in Windsor because, I mean, we would have heard about it, but they're probably picking certain cities in order to test this out in. Yeah. To see if this is going to... Now how they're going to figure out if that's going to increase or decrease the prices. I think it's almost impossible to, it's, to it's, figure that out. It's going to be tough, right? Like, cause we can always look to other countries and see where, where, how it's working there. But right. when we fail to look at cultural differences, uh, at um, social welfare differences, we can't equate apples to apples here. Right. 
So um, I, I think it's something that we should try. Mm -hmm. Like we're we're at the point now where we're getting so comfortable with the way we are that we're afraid of change. Absolutely. Like we need to start mm -hmm. making changes if we want to see right. change, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can't, we talked about this before, the definition of insanity. Yeah. Like we need to do something different. So mm -hmm. I think this is a great, great idea. And whether or not it increases the price or decreases the price, I mean, that's pretty much hard to prove. But at the same time, it's, it's more ethical, period. It's what that's, people want. Like right. they've done how many surveys you can go online and look up and anytime that this question is brought up, the general public supports an open bidding process. Yes. So at the end of the day, if it's not going to make a big difference in, in housing prices, then we should do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we've, I know we get so riled up on that particular topic, <laughs> but... Um, we beat that horse a little <laughs> Yeah, much. but it, it's an important topic it that is I think for needs sure. to be discussed. Um, and then we, we move on to the legal right to a home inspection. Um, I agree with this, but what does that mean? Like, we, you do have a legal right right now. Right. It's just, is the seller willing to accept that? Right. So currently, if you write an offer, I write an offer, I have an inspection, you don't. Yeah. You're going to be favored, mm -hmm. right? So the seller's going to say, well... I don't want an inspection, even though my house might be great. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. This is an unconditional offer. I'm going to go with your offer. Yeah. It, it's not right. that I don't have a legal right to it. I just. You're. I mean. I've chosen the, not to. Exactly. When you weigh the you weigh the two offers, the one without the inspection is always going to win. Yeah. You know, a seller's not going to say, you know, this is a very smart buyer. I think that <laughs> having an inspection of my home is is just brilliant. You know, I think I'm going to choose this buyer because. <laughs> it makes no They're sense, so smart. right? Exactly. So the legal right to a home inspection. I don't know if that means every every offer would, you know, you could go in unconditionally, but before the house closes, you're able to do an inspection. Who knows? That just opens up a full can of worms too. Like yeah. how do you how do you police that? Right. So that's that's an interesting one that I think they need to elaborate on a lot more. Yeah, hundred percent. And then the total transparency on the history of recent say, home sale prices on title searches. That's again big. It very and again, yeah. So title searches. So um, if, yeah, lawyers do so. I mean, yeah, it's already like that now. Yeah, and if if you want to get one done, you do have to pay for one. So right. is that really a benefit? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, the next one, requiring real estate agents to disclose to all participants in a transaction when they are involved in both sides of a potential sale. That's right. happening now. Yeah, it's multiple representation. Mm -hmm. BC is banned, stuff like this already. Right. Um, but um, I don't see how this is being something new. Yeah. Um, if they were to say that they want to ban it, then that would be a, a proposal. Um, the beneficial ownership registry, uh, that we won't get into too much, but again, BC forefronting this right now, more transparency and who owns what properties, mm -hmm. um, preventing a lot of corporations from buying up all properties. Right. Um, and uh, requiring mortgage lenders to act in your best interest so that you are fully informed of the, of the range of choices at your disposal, including a first time home buyer incentive. Again, that should be happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's, that's a little bit of, it's fluff. Like right. this should be already happening. Yeah. Like that you have a fiduciary, fiduciary, a fiduciary, a fiduciary yes. commitment to, <laughs> to your, do that. To yes. do that. So yeah. why is this even in the proposal? Right. So, yep. so I know this is a little long winded, but these are some of the things that are being proposed mm -hmm. out there. Are they going to work? Are I they, don't know. You know what? Let's ask the people who created these. <laughs> I, Let's get a yes. hold of the liberal uh, um, politicians in the area. Yeah, honestly, we should get all, all of them. Like, I think right. we should have uh, we should have representation from liberal, conservative, NDP, Green, whoever mm -hmm. wants to come on. Yep, and find out uh, what their views are. Yeah, absolutely. Like, because these are the ones that are going to put the legislation in to make these changes happen. Right. So let's 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 find out where their heads are at with it. Yeah, are they connected, or do they even know half of this stuff that's happening right now? Mm -hmm. So good idea. I'm excited for that. Me too. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, that I think that's enough for one day then. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Corey likes all these stats and everything. It's like, <laughs> no. By the end of it, it's like, whoo, you're so smart, numbers. Corey. <laughs> no, I just like numbers. <laughs> he likes politics and he likes numbers. So, unfortunately, yeah, I'm the opposite. So, I just listen to everything he says and <laughs> go with it. <laughs> 
Anyways, awesome. it was great chatting and we'll see you next time. <laughs>